Hey there guys, today we're taking a look at Monster Hunter Rise running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5600H. This is running on the B-Link SCR5 mini PC, an absolute favorite system of mine. And the performance that we're getting here, you're looking at running with the average graphics settings. It isn't the highest graphics settings you can go with, but it is the medium settings essentially. And as you can see, the level of performance that we're getting at these settings right now is decent enough, though it isn't incredible. We're not getting an Above 60 FPS experience, though our 1% lows are very close to our average, which means if you pay attention to the frame times, everything is consistent enough that you could realistically play the game like this perfectly fine. Now, the game itself isn't extremely demanding by any means. It was a port of essentially a Switch game, though at these settings, you are running it at significantly higher graphics than what it was running at on the Switch, and you are at least hitting above 30 FPS consistently. It's certainly decent enough to play like this. You will have very little to complain about but if you're someone that is used to high refresh rate this is just not going to give you that experience but it is consistent enough if you were using a handheld device like a steam deck or a gpd win which none of them run on this specific chip but if you were getting this level of performance on a system like that you would be more than satisfied so it's certainly passable but we can try to adjust some graphics settings to see if we can't get some better performance here but first let's take a look at the lowest in-game graphics preset with the lowest in-game graphics settings we start to see some pretty high levels of performance we are now consistently getting an above 100 fps gaming experience in fact our average is just slightly under 120 with our one percent lows being just slightly above 100 fps it is a night and day difference in terms of the level of performance that we were getting with the average graphics preset but one thing to note about the lowest graphics settings is the fact that it actually part of the preset adjusts the resolution so we are running at 70 percent of 1080p here so we are not running this at a full 1080p resolution certainly fine enough to play like this especially considering how smooth it is but if you're very sensitive to resolution you are very much going to notice that this doesn't look anywhere near as good as the full 1080p resolution we of course aren't using anything like fsr on top of it there is no filtering system to try to make this resolution look better than what it's already running at so because of that the lack of that kind of filtering it might not exactly be the greatest experience for you though if you're someone that values high High FPS, this is pretty much the most ideal way of getting it on this specific chip. And as you can see, the frame time charts are absolutely spectacular. So the level of performance that we're getting out of this is going to be just absolutely beautiful. And this is really closer to the resolution that you would see when you play this on the Switch, though with a significantly higher FPS. So overall, it is a rock solid experience, but the resolution might be a deal breaker for you. Now, my ideal settings is usually to run with the lowest in-game preset but adjust the resolution back to the full 100 resolution so we'll take a look at my ideal settings right now and with the ideal settings that it is running with the lowest in-game graphics settings but at the full 1080p resolution we do get a nice bump in terms of performance where we're just slightly under a 60 fps average while it isn't a meteoric jump in fps in comparison to going from the average to the low preset with the lowered resolution it does at least look look better and it feels noticeably better because when you have lower FPSs, even small increases in FPS are going to make a drastic difference. FPS has pretty much diminishing returns. And part of that is just the fact that the time in between frames is just drastically reduced. Going from 30 FPS to 60 FPS is going to feel monumental, just like going from 60 FPS to 120 is going to feel pretty large, but going from 120 to 200 140 less noticeable and then going from 240 to 480 fps is at that point practically indistinguishable for people so even getting something like a 5 fps jump or 6 to 10 fps jump at these lower fps are going to put you in a completely different league in terms of performance so this is the most ideal experience if you really value resolution if you value performance more than anything else going with the lowest in-game graphic settings is not a bad move especially if you're willing to use sharpening filters and things like that to try to make that lower resolution just feel a little bit better you're never really going to be able to make up for that drop in resolution especially if you're not using something like fsr 2.0 or dlss where it's taking in information from the game that normally would not be present when you're just using a filter but it's still decent enough of an experience and i feel like the vast majority of people would probably just adjust to that lower resolution and not even think about it but i would say that if you want the most ideal experience you have to 
go with the lowest preset, but I would recommend going with low preset and then adjusting the resolution up to the full 1080p because the experience is still going to be more than decent enough and it practically just feels like a 60 FPS gaming experience. Since our 1% lows do not dip down to a level that I think ruins the overall experience. But we are going to be taking a look at this later up against the Ryzen 5 6600H so we can see what the difference is going from a Vega based iGPU to the first generation of RDNA based iGPUs. So stay tuned for that. I will catch you in the next one.